Thank you so much for, for being here. Uh, my name is Hector Dominguez. I am the Open Data Coordinator for the city of Portland. Uh, it's actually a pleasure to be here. I'm enjoying a lot of these talks, conversations, meeting new people, and, uh, and this is exciting. So I'm going to be sharing a little bit. This, this title is uh, it's just a catchy title, to be honest. It's, uh, because I'm working with Open Data, and I'm working in the government, so we sort of need to pitch that, yeah, what we are doing in government is really going to do some change. Uh, the reality sometimes that is that um, government in general is a sluggish to ch and, and it's really hard to change things in government and uh, it's a challenge now that technology is just evolving so fast that uh, that we are really working really hard in, in changing the culture inside the uh, different organizations in the government so everybody can start like be ready for, for change but at the same time do the work that local governments uh, or the local government should be doing. So anyway, so it's a little bit of all that it's, and it's in a, uh, as a question there. Uh, I'm going to start with introducing a, so from where I'm coming from. So I'm originally from Mexico. And, uh, and one way to introduce myself that I'm very proud, and actually I'm, I don't do very often, but uh, here. But this is this project that we started in, back in 2007, 2008 in Mexico in the, uh, with, in the mountains, mostly in the, um, actually in Zapatista communities there. And then it just uh, went over to different places. Uh, we were actually trying, experimenting with semantic web back, back then in 2008. Uh, we have all these different architecture where we were going to, uh, uh, the goal that we had back then was to, to promote the idea of uh, community on uh, science and technology centers, basically. And the way that we were just envisioning that was to create those community centers so the local knowledge could stay there with resources and, and uh, empowering people locally, and then build a network around those different centers so we can share information uh, of what everybody was doing in, a, in an open knowledge kind of uh, structure. And, and we got to, to meet like so many people there and work uh, with different communities. We learned so much. Uh, but then, uh, so our project was called Talleres Libres of uh, Arts and Technology, or the, that uh, with Open Workshops of Arts and Technology, Talleres Libres de Artes y Tecnologías in Spanish. And, uh, and yeah, we got to, to work with so many people, learn so many experiences. And, uh, and some of those projects are still ongoing. Uh, however, personally, like just took me here to Portland and uh, Anyway, so we, we had all this idea around metadata and then building on top of the real community needs back then. Uh, so how technology and information can actually, uh, or could actually empower those communities and, and make the, all the, these community dynamics more, more rich and, and more powerful internally, right? Anyway, so, but back here in Portland, uh, and now in, in my role as, as, as a bureaucrat, I suppose. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm actually, so we, it's a team, it's, uh, I'm part of, of the Smart Cities team. And, and Smart Cities in, in Port, Smart Cities was actually, uh, to be frank, is a, was a term, or is a term, that was crafted by the private sector to sell stuff to cities, to government. Uh, right now in, in cities, uh, different city teams, we are actually trying to claim that term and try to change it so we can really um, uh, represent what government should be doing, right? So for instance, this is just kind of the, the dream. We shouldn't forget that well, well, how the, what is the, the future that we want to see. Portland particularly is, is just, uh, the uh, homelessness uh, crisis, uh, uh, housing affordability is obviously one of the big priorities. And what about having this uh, in 2030 new something like that, right? For those who are local, so Street Roots is that um, publication and organization that supports uh, 
people who are going through a houseless situation. So Portland defeats house, uh, homelessness in 2030, or Portland has reached this 100% uh, clean energy by, by then. So actually the city has this big goal of uh, being 100% renewable energy by 2050. And then, yeah, we have a real smart city that works for everybody. So this is kind of the expectation when we're talking about the smart cities and data and business intelligence. So we should be building uh, this is smart government so we can start uh, doing real uh, good, better decisions each time, right? However, the things are not always as we expect, right? So the reality is that we have, we, we need to work with a lot of that, right? The spreadsheets, PDFs, uh, information inside emails. So everything is uh, disaggregated. Everybody uh, go through silos, particularly the city of Portland has uh, this very, um, a particular form of government where uh, so our city commissioners are, are uh, assigned by function and not by district. That means that every city commissioner uh, has on their uh, hair or his portfolio a number of bureaus. So at the end of the day, this end of, uh, so we have, rather than having only one mayor, we in reality, we have five different mayors that we have to be dealing with decision making and trying to build uh, citywide programs with everybody and try to convince everybody that things are good. So in other hand, so we live in, in this data rich society. Every, uh, right now, everything as we have seen and we are very aware is goes around data. Uh, there are so many uh, different stories about that abuse, uh, biases, and, and from the corporative world, narratives around the big brother, uh, like government that is just uh, like surveilling and punishing very specific demographics, uh, particularly uh, those who are, who are more vulnerable. And then uh, it's, it's quite a challenge, right? So data is not the same for everybody, right? So some people see data as an asset. So that uh, narrative comes mostly from the private sector, right? So we, uh, we try to build an economy around data. And, and particularly this graph comes from this study from the European Union where they uh, give a different value according to the economic uh, opportunity for open data in different uh, specific categories, right? So geographic information all the way to cultural content at the end. Um, so digital uh, data, digital life, so is what we are right now. So we have this digital shadow, right? Uh, for those who have that pr uh, privilege, right? We have that digital shadow where all our uh, transactions that we are uh, making all over the world, so what we buy in our grocery store, how we, if you live in a house, that has a smart meters uh, there, so all how you use energy, how you use gas, how you use uh, water is actually recorded every five, 15 minutes, for instance. Where you move, if you are using an automatic way of payment for your transit or your transportation also, your cell phones are a way to surveillance. And well, I, I'm preaching to the choir here. Uh, however, data can be also source of empowerment. So these are local projects here in Portland. Uh, so or the organizations to me uh, on the, in your left side, I suppose. So there is this Cully Energy Focus uh, Assessment. So Cully is this neighborhood in Northeast Portland. It's mostly Latino families. And uh, different advocacy groups have done this energy assessment for uh, new affordable housing units. So they're basically, so, uh, like they were asking, I don't know, like 150 families on, on, on how they use energy and what is what they want uh, energy to be, to be part of their lives, right? Uh, on this side, so we have, uh, well in the middle, we have a, also a really uh, awesome project which is called the Right to Root. 
So is that's not in North Portland. It's mostly um, uh, African American uh, communities that have been displaced. And with that and information, this project is trying to to make the point for those families who have the right to return to those neighborhoods, right? And on this side, so there is uh, another uh, trans transit and transportation assessment done by this organization, mostly uh, Opal. They do environmental justice work. And, uh, and all of them are community-based uh, projects, right? The city uh, perhaps has some claim on, on supporting financially uh, this project and a little bit of that, of that. Uh, but uh, this is just community-based, so data can be empowerment. And there are, through the nation, through the world, there are so many other projects, inspiring projects as well. So in government, data in reality, we can see this, this digital commons, right? Where, and mostly because uh, of the, the rules of transparency and accountability. And, and so I'm going to go really, really fast the next portion. Uh, <laughs> and this is another way to, as digital commons, they, they have, uh, in the way that we can govern commons, is, um, has all the issues around, around that. So that is all that and more. Open data, so you can see some of the features of uh, all the principles, what open data should be, are around here. However, the, the value of open data is when it starts being linked. Uh -huh. When we start making those connections in between one data set to another, and, and, and all these different principles come actually from, from around the 2000s, right, early 2000s, where people start, started looking into how high, uh, the value now of a highly linked data in all the, our different communities. However, when we have now this new scenario, uh, data is, uh, is really more strategic, but also some issues around privacy, around uh, trust start being, uh, uh, like coming up more. So going to what the city is doing, this is a general kind of map ecosystem of, uh, of our data management system. We have our data lake in the middle, so Portland is testing, we're testing actually cloud services just to provide some services internal to the city. These are all the different bureaus here. The city also has a, a number of sensor networks around that has to have uh, collect information around transit, energy, economic development, uh, air quality, and et cetera, environmental measures. And then, uh, so, so we tried to build some data analytics resources, which is quite challenging uh, because that implies cultural change. Well, it's a whole story. And then on this side, so we're trying also to build the, the uses of that, all that information. So who's going to be uh, utilizing all, all this here, which is part of the government, part of the commons, so our regional government, so Portland is actually, for those who are not he from here, Portland has three different counties. And therefore, uh, we have this metro government, uh, a regional government that, that tries to coordinate with all different counties. And then around Portland, there are different important municipalities as well that, that we interact. And around all this urban area, there is the rural area that provides a lot of resources and services to the urban area. So, we are trying to, we are envisioning building all this uh, big ecosystem. Data inventories, standards, so standardizing all that, nested, system, uh, nested ways of uh, building uh, embedded information within all here, and I can just go, go really, really technical on that. I'm going to skip that. We're trying to automate all these different processes, so at the end, so we have something that we can trust. We have a, an, a, so this is all design, we are working on that, but the idea is to have all this assessment where we can actually evaluate data integrity, privacy checks, and the equity of the social impacts that we can actually, a data set can actually have. Uh, licensing models to make sure that it's open and actually we, uh, people can utilize that, so different layers around all that. So govern, governing all that from the digital perspective has all these different challenges, right? So also this very specific topic, we can just go so deep, but it goes into the, the tragedy of the commons, for instance, issues around prisoner's dilemma and the, uh, all these collective uh, action 
or, or, or how all these very special or uh, specific interest groups are actually trying to manipulate the, uh, how the decisions and the management of, of data is being done in the city. Uh, so things that uh, end up at the end of having just technocrats making decisions on how different communities who are not on the table of the decision are actually being impacted. So uh, there is a number of issues around and we try to embed in, uh, like s that social uh, equity values and ethics around all that. Uh, what we are build how we are mm, uh, building all these technological solutions. And then, of course, the complexity of m managing all that and looking into the social issues that we want to resolve. That's, we should never forget about that. So data is not the same for all. And I really apologize. This is so a bunch of articles around uh, how uh, data can actually harm people who are over surveilled, but also those who are under surveilled. So uh, those who are invisible to data uh, where are uh, we, within all this new digital world, right? Unintended consequences, bunch of examples here. And I, I apologize, I'm going to jump there. So we need to build in privacy and privacy audits on all this. So we make sure that, uh, that we are protecting people's data and information. And I'm glad that this, this example came out. Uh, bias in information, so all how decision making is actually impacted by who's programming, the sources of data and information, where is this running, who's uh, having access to that information, and who's not participating of all that. So community engagement is core for all this, what we are doing, uh, open data ownership, responsible data management, uh, those are core principles. And then, so we really need to manage data differently. We are trying to uh, build our connections and relationship with our community members. We understand also that, that that's a burden for many uh, community groups because they are already really, um, uh, they are doing a lot with the, uh, like the scarcity of resources that some of them have. So we are trying to balance, we are trying to support those relationships that help the community in up to some extent. So understanding who the stakeholders are, that's actually really important, and, and how we can get this feedback from, from community, right? Either from uh, different ways in, in, of civic engagement, which some of the, like the coding community is part of it, but that's not the only one, and how we can make accountable all these decisions on how technology can be used. And at the end, it's really, it really a, a co-evolution. Right, a coevolution between what the private sector is offering to government, but also how in the government we are actually uh, managing all these new challenges in front of us. People, individuals who are also understanding the new relationships with technology and information and the world in general, how the world is changing around all of us. And, and all the organizations that, that, that have some uh, service to the community uh, in, in different ways, right? And so at the end, we try to get all to this kind of place where, where people can have access to information, we can get uh, mine in a meaningful mining of the, all this information, generating value to, to our communities and our uh, agencies as well. And with that, thank you so much.